Hello everyone, and welcome back. For those of you who keep up to date on my channel, you will know that I have just redesigned my writing process. If you notice anything different during this analysis, please let me know if it is a good change or a bad one. I also, just a couple of days ago, binged the entire Takagi-san series again for the first time since the finale aired. Not only did it make me feel happy about this show again, but it also poked a few holes in some points I made in some of my earlier analyses, but that is a topic for another video. Now with that out of the way, let's get into today's analysis, suggested by JMG Productions, Pool, a story based on the manga's second chapter that you can find in episode 2 from 15 minutes in. The episode starts off at the pool owned by the middle school, and if you are as curious as I am as to why so many anime schools have pools, then you'll probably be interested to know that in fact a majority of Japanese schools have their own swimming pool. Swimming started to be taught only to samurai and fishermen in the Middle Ages, but it was decided that swimming was a skill that should be taught in school to all students. It was in 1955 when 100 children drowned during a boat accident while mere metres from lifeboats that the government and the diet decided that swimming needed to be a compulsory subject. If you want to read more on this, I will leave a link in the description and in my notes to the presentation I'm sourcing by Atsunori Matsui, Takahisa Minami, Dr. Toshaki Goya, and Dr. Kevin Moran. We see Nishikata sitting on the sidelines of the pool looking disappointed that he can't swim due to his injured hand. He looks out to see the rest of his class swimming. After verbally stating his disappointment, Tagagi, who is suddenly sitting next to him, agrees. Nishikata jumps, having not realised that she was there. He asks if she is sitting out too, and Takagi confirms this. She guesses that Nishikata is sitting out because of his injured hand, and then asks what happened to it. Nishikata tries to brush it off with, things happen, but Takagi says that she bets he tried to pet a stray cat and got bitten. Nishikata freaks out and asks how she knew and stated that he hadn't told anyone. Takagi asks if she really guessed correctly and becomes excited, calling Nishikata a klutz and laughing at him in the process. So this is where I might need to correct a statement I made in an earlier analysis, particularly Shelter from the Rain, when the cat took shelter with Takagi and Nishikata, and Nishikata warned Takagi that this one scratched, I guessed that this is probably the cat that injured his hand in pool. But since it's made clear that this was a biting incident, now I'm not so sure. Nishikata tries to change the subject by asking why she is sitting out today. However, he cuts himself off when he looks at Takagi and sees her grabbing her stomach while looking uncomfortable. Nishikata is reminded of something that Takio told him while he was reading a copy of 100% Unrequited Love, Hello Bookstore and Shopping. Takio tells him that if a girl is sitting out during swimming class, it could be because they are on their period, and that it can cause abdominal pain. What's interesting here is that Nishikata introduces Takio to the audience as the King of Health class, which wouldn't have made a lot of sense to a first time viewer, but remember that shot from the OVA where Takio was using a periscope to perv on women, and unintentionally Kimura? I happen to remember people from my late primary school and early high school life who used to love sex ed classes for all the wrong reasons, which I wouldn't put past our pervy friend here. So hopefully that adds a little more context as to why Takio might be the king of health class. Also turns out this thing is called a periscope. The more you know. Nishikata then cuts himself off and says not to worry, before thinking to himself that it's not something he should be asking. Takagi picks up where Nishikata left off and asks if he wanted to know why she isn't swimming. Nishikata becomes nervous that she heard him. Takagi states that since she guessed why he wasn't swimming, it only seemed fitting that he guessed why she isn't. Nishikata initially guesses that Takagi isn't feeling well, but Takagi claims that that answer is too vague, and that he will need to be more specific. He says that he doesn't really want to know, but Takagi claims victory, and if there's one thing we should all know by now, it's that calling Nishikata the loser is like calling Marty McFly a chicken. You're gonna get what you want out of him. And just like Takagi wanted, Nishikata agrees to guess. And yes, Takagi does want him to compete in this little guessing game, but I'll get into why at the end of the video. After Takagi explains that Nishikata only gets one guess, he starts in a monologuing about how Takagi is messing with him, because she thinks he's too nervous to guess that she is on her period. But then wonders if this is a trap. He gets stuck in a mental loop where he imagines making his guess out loud only to be berated by Takagi for being rude. And then a situation where he doesn't say it out loud and Takagi makes fun of him for being so uneducated on how women work. He gets trapped in a loop of wondering whether it's a trap or an honest guessing game. He tries to work out other possibilities but realises that Takagi doesn't look injured or like she has any specific type of illness. We cut a short ways into the future where Nishikata is in a complaining that while everyone else is having fun, he is stuck here playing mind games with Takagi in the heat. 
Takagi then asks Nishikata if he is taking this seriously or if he is just watching the girl swim. Nishikata says that he isn't, but Takagi asks him if he is sure, and then states that boys look at girls' chests all the time. What's interesting here is the expression and tone that Takagi is using here. Usually she speaks with a smile and a pleasant attitude, but here she seems somewhat annoyed or even defensive. Again though, there's a reason that she's doing this that I will get into at the end. Nishikata restates that he wasn't looking, but then begins to think about what Takagi just said about looking at girls' chests. Nishikata realises that Takagi doesn't really have a big chest, and then remembers his friend Kimura, who tells him some girls with small chests are kind of sensitive about the issue. Wow, my choice of words in that sentence was particularly awful. Uh, having a small chest is not an issue. I apologise for my very poor choice of words. Nishikata refers to him as the king of early lunch, which already makes sense when you consider that he is eating in the shot he is introduced in, and makes all the sense in the world when Kimura is seated in front of the teacher in seating arrangement and freaks out that he can't eat an early lunch. Nishikata begins to wonder if Takagi is staying out of the pool because she has a complex about her small chest. He then imagines using that as his guess in a sequence where he acts so out of character that it is nearly a surreal experience to watch. He freaks out and thinks to himself that he could never say that because it is beyond rude, and that he still has period as an answer, but that's pretty rude too. Takagi then asks if he's still thinking, and that he is running out of time. Nishikata remembers that the health class textbook said that a period was nothing to be embarrassed about, so he decides to say it with his head held high. He begins a statement, proudly confident in his answer before getting nervous and saying the last bit of his answer really quietly with his back turned. Takagi tells him that he is wrong and tells him that that kind of thing is rude to say to a girl. Nishikata turns to Takagi to plead his case, but Takagi starts laughing at him because he is bright red and clearly flustered. Nishikata wonders if that means she's self-conscious about her small chest, while Takagi takes her pee shorts off, revealing that she is wearing her school swimsuit underneath. As she goes to take her pee shirt off, she tells Nishikata that, too embarrassed by my small chest is also wrong. She goes towards the pool and asks the teacher if she can swim. The teacher says it's okay. As Takagi gets ready to jump in, she says out loud that now that she has seen one of Nishikata's famous reactions, she can now go for a swim. Nishikata asks if she was staying out of the pool just to tease him. Takagi only responds with a smile. As she goes to jump into the pool, she tells Nishikata that once his hand is better, they should go swimming together. She gets into the pool and begins to swim. Nishikata thinks to himself that when they do swim together, Takagi will find a way to tease him anyway. And the story ends. Being such an early story in the show, Paul has a lot to teach us about both Takagi and Nishikata. For one, it shows us that Nishikata is very concerned with respect and tries his best not to be rude. It also shows us that Nishikata has a bit of maturing to do. And we can certainly see why Nishikata might have thought Takagi was on a period, because it was a thought that Takagi put straight into his head. That's a pretty bold claim, and I don't have any concrete facts to back it up, but I do believe that everything that went through Nishikata's head was somewhat planned out by Takagi. She grabbed her stomach intentionally to trick Nishikata and later mentioned looking at women's chests while using a tone that could suggest a hint of jealousy, just because she knew what Nishikata would take from that and the thought process he would have. She even coaxed him into the game by claiming victory, which, like I said, is the equivalent of calling Marty McFly chicken. He'll become so desperate to disprove it that he can be talked into doing anything. And why would Takagi want Nishikata to guess? Well, because she wants to watch him squirm with the ideas that she implants into his head. The only piece of evidence I have that even remotely backs this up is Takaki's comment towards the end about how being subconscious about a small chest is also not the right answer. How else would she know that Nishikata was thinking this without having an intimate knowledge of the way that his mind works and how to manipulate it? Well, I mean, other than being a literal mind reader, which I know some people like to believe. And that is it for the analysis. Make sure you subscribe to catch more. If you want to see a Takagi-san story analysed, suggest it in the comments. Make sure you check out my main channel to see the films I write and direct. And check out my website in the description for notes and outtakes. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.